Greetings, Jelly Spoons! First off, I've got to let you know this is not a February progress vlog. I have been doing lots of stuff to work on the Never Never project. However, uh, I have backburnered that for just a couple of days while I work on this. I am finally attempting to make my version of a Jean Forbes Robertson slash Nina Peter Pan outfit from the original show. So this is the image I am currently working from. Sadly, there are not that many great colour images of costumes from back then. This one is the design of the costume. I believe this is the one that Nina wore, and it's very similar to the one that my favourite Jean Forbes wore as well. So this is the image I'm working off. There are other images, but obviously they are in black and white. Some of them have been recoloured, but when you zoom in, they just get a bit too grainy. This one is a picture that some wonderful person took, and it's in the archives of J.M. Barry's home. And it's his home in Scotland, it's not his home in London where most of his other stuff are and a bunch of the other stuff that's in Yale because ugh, America doesn't have enough things already. Anyway, I'm not bitter. So this is one of the wonderful costumes that is still in existence and just look at the sleeve details. And I noticed while I was looking at the pictures that it seems to be a different colour on each side and I really like that. And what I'm noticing now, actually, is it's not just half orange and half red. It kind of looks as if it's half orange and half red and the sleeves have been swapped as well. Can you see what I mean? So it's not just like shadow from the picture. That fabric on that side genuinely does look darker. And that sleeve looks more like this colour and that sleeve looks more like this colour. That is interesting and I really like that. I am going to use that, so it, whether it's true or not. And I unfortunately cannot zoom in enough to be able to read this and I haven't found a reprint of it online. So I don't know what this says, it's probably describing the costume a little bit. So it might explain that this is remnants of costumes that they put together and that's why it's different colours. However, I like it being slightly different colours. I really like that as an idea, so I am going to keep that. And I'm also trying to work out what this button is here because there's not one on the other side. So yeah, I am looking at all these tiny little details and I'm loving it. Like look at the little details on the end of the sleeves and stuff. So yeah, look at these two colors and then look at these wonderful pieces of suede fabric I've found because yes, as I said, there was no description I could find particularly. However, when I went deep into my Peter Pan research books, in particular, this bad boy, the Peter Pan Chronicles, which takes you through well, unfortunately it has Peter Pans that I don't like in it, but most of the time it has wonderful Peters from the stage and it talks about different costumes. And look, it naturally falls open on the Jean Forbes Robertson page because she is my favourite and I read about her quite a lot. So yes, this book has wonderful, amazing things in it and various different costumes. And this actually led me to finding a thing on the internet that got me very excited. So I got a description of what the costume was made of. Eventually, I managed to find a description that said it was in fact made of suede. So. That makes me very excited and happy because I had ordered suede and so therefore I was right and that gives me vindication and I am very happy about this because, yeah, just look at it, it's going to be pretty. So yes, look at this picture in these colours, I've got the orange and I've got the darker sort of ready colour. They're not exactly 100% but as I always say, I am cosplaying on a budget here. I am always and forever shopping on a budget. I did look in charity shops to see if I could find any sort of curtains or fabric but I just couldn't find anything so I did have to order this fabric but I'm not sorry. Number one, I have wonderful Patreons and some people bought some fantastic commissions off me this month so I've been able to use this to buy this wonderful fabric. And on the bottom, I also have, just shifting these out of the way, I have some scraps. A fabric that I'm going to use. I think I'm not going to use this one. I've decided not to use this one. It's just too green. It's too, yeah, it's too green. When I'm looking at the leaves, they are sort of grey green, but they are different shades, particularly on the back. I don't want to have it all as just one colour. So I did manage to find some images of what the back looks like, including I actually found a statue. Hang on, let me show you. Here, look. So there's a Jean Forbes Robinson figurine, and what I would not give to have a copy of this. Oh my god. So it actually shows all the way around the costume. Now the color is just one color, uh, probably because you know, it's a friggin' figurine. They can't have endless amounts of colors, but yeah, look, you can see all the leaf details at the back and how they hang down. And I have noticed in some pictures, they have like these like um, net wings coming down the sides of the costume as well, which I really like. So I've included those in here too. Gonna be bits of net. And I really like that. Obviously Peter Pan doesn't need wings and therefore doesn't have any. So just having those two little like, Netty, flicky bits I really kind of like. So uh, yeah, my <laughs> extensive research has led me to uh, Jean Forbes Robertson figurines and statues and many museum pages across the world. I have gone from galleries in the UK to Yale University and back again. And my God, there is both so much out there and a frustratingly little amount of stuff that's out there. So these are the colors I have come up with. So looking at the statue, which obviously isn't the exact colors, but going by, the pictures that I do have. As I said, it is a sort of grey green. 
I actually did a TikTok video on this. Peter Pan is traditionally in the red and the orange, the autumnal colours. He isn't actually in green. Well, not in his descriptions in the book or the play anyway. Obviously, this can change over time and many different stage adaptions had him in various different colours. But yeah, he is not a green character. He is more of a red autumnal character. So there it is. So yeah, no no bright green or like this one. So yeah, I'm, I'm discounting that one. I am instead going to be using, I think this color is almost perfect, but I don't have a lot of it. So I have also found this one, which again, I don't have a lot of, this is literally scraps, but I also have this wonderful gray. And I think that this one, one, I do have more of this gray and it's got some texture in it already, but also they are looking just a little gray, just some of them. And these colors together could be a nice, interesting combination, I think. All right, let's get cracking. Let's do this. I'm practicing pretending to be a good cosplayer who does a mock-up before they do anything else. You see, now that I've made my mock-up, I can use it as a template while I cut things out. See, I, I can pretend to be professional. I can do things properly. All right, I'm about to sew the first of the front panels and I am going to do it by hand sewing like I normally do because I do have my machine now, but I don't know, it's something about this feels more personal, so I am hand stitching this. All right, let's go. I am way too excited right now. Considering I have nowhere near finished, I am way too excited. I have had to order some extra half meters of this fabric because I just didn't quite have enough to make the sleeves. I need to get better at uh, patterning for myself so that I can, you know, actually have enough fabric. But it's okay. It means I'll have more fabric and that is fine. So uh, yeah, you've got this and then it goes around to the back. So this is the front. Quite happy with how the collar is going to sit. Of course, you're not really going to see much of this wonderful collar that I have actually managed to make in shape because it's going to get covered over like leaves and stuff. But flicking it around to the back, yeah, you can see I have already I have ironed and stitched down the middle. So these two are now attached together at the back. I continued it round. I, I considered having the back as one color or having sort of some swap sides. So it went from orange to red. But I actually thought, nah. It makes more sense to have it, you know, half and a half. And also you aren't going to see actually that much of the back because it is going to be mostly covered. What are you doing with your day? Well, I am cutting out leaves. And no, I'm not ironing it first because I'm a rebel. Just getting a rough idea of placement and shape. Getting more of an idea of placement and shape now. I like this. Yeah, I like these colors together. This looks really nice. I, I'm glad I chose these. Yes. Um, to put some pins in it, do da do da. This is now a very basic tunic, and I'm making it look cool by adding lots of leaves. So today, I'm working on different bits. I have had to order more fabric for the sleeves because I've run out. So I have pinned the leaves where I want them, and I have stitched some seam sides down the front so that I can put in the laces more easily, and now I am working on making the leaves for the belt. I am making a belt that is technically not the same belt that Nina would have worn, but seeing as this costume is also worn by my favorite, Jean Falls Robertson, I am choosing to make her belt. The belt itself has a interesting history, and I want to tell you a little bit about it. Unfortunately, the artist or maker of it is unknown. It was made in Britain uh, for Jean Falls Robertson to wear in a rendition of Peter Pan, however, it is, yeah, we don't know who made it, unfortunately, which is very sad. It was worn by Jean Forbes Robertson in her role as Peter Pan. She played Peter Pan in London annually from 1927, I believe, up until about 1935. Pauline Chase played Peter Pan some of the time as well, but predominantly it was Jean Forbes Robertson. I think she played it for like nine consecutive years at one point, something like that. Again, I have had to brighten it because it's an old ass picture but this is the belt so it's just suede leaves it's a pretty simple belt which is partly why i like it because it's not going to take too much away from the costume itself so this belt it belonged to jean falls robertson it was part of her costume as peter pan however she gifted it to another actress who played peter pan around 1960 1961 this actress's name was julia lockwood and she actually has an account of when jean forbes robertson came to give it to her which i think is really sweet so i'm just going to read it to you real quick right now it's off this web page it's absolutely wonderful uh, so she says, my most treasured memory of playing Peter came during my first production. One day after the matinee, uh, she was told someone was there to see her. She said, yes, of course. She was still wearing her Peter Pan costume at the time. And in walks Jean Forbes Robertson. Apparently she nearly fainted uh, because this was like royalty to her and hell, I think I would as well. Jean was carrying a small brown paper parcel in her hand, which she gave to Julia. And apparently she said, you were very good and I would like you to wear this. And inside was this belt, the suede leaves and everything. Julia immediately recognised it as the belt that Jean Forbes Robertson had worn over her tunic in her run as Peter Pan. 
Julia said that she was amazed, delighted, and honoured, and she kept the belt up until 2004, in December, when she attended a Peter Pan celebration at the Duke of York's Theatre, when she handed it over, along with her leafy jerkin, to the Theatre Museum. So that is why I am making this belt. Because not only does it harken back to my favourite historical actress playing Peter, but it also has a really sweet story to go with it. I am arranging the leaves they're two colours and I like that I've got two different colours I think they look quite similar as well I think I've got the light and the dark I think they contrast enough I think I like it anyway it's really cool now to put this through the sewing machine without getting any of the needles stuck and without stabbing myself wish me luck folks and here she is the buckle I had was a little bit smaller but I don't care it looks really cool I'm very very happy I really like how this belt turned out I've now pinned one sleeve and threaded it to see how it looks. I've pinned the leaves as well, and I've pinned the other sleeve as well. So many pins going on. I, I'm genuinely worried I'm going to run out. And I hate sleeves. I've laced up the front, and I'm really happy with how this looks. I love it. In some versions, the net is spider webs, so I have gone for a compromise. I'm using magical stars, because they're the best colour I've got. I have worked it out. I have worked it out. I work, it, it's like five in the morning right now and I got out of bed to film this because I worked it out. I know, I know what that button is for. I know what the popper is for, that little thing on the side. I know what it is for, or at least I know what I think it's for. And therefore I'm choosing to be right because I, I want it to be true so badly. All right, so I've got to show you. All right, I'm going to show you. All right, this is it. Yeah, this is it. This is it. This is the popper I was talking about. There isn't one on the other side. It's just here. All right, it's just on this side. It's not for flying harnesses. There is nothing that we'd need to attach around the front. I've tried to read into it, right? Because uh, the harness would go underneath and out the, out the sides and everything like that, okay? This, there wouldn't have been mics. It's not that kind of show. It's for the fucking acorn button. The acorn button that he gives to Wendy and he plucks off his clothes. He can't pull it out of a pocket. I mean, he could pull it out of a pocket, but he doesn't really have many. It can just be attached and then it looks like it was a part of the costume and it just pops off and then he gives it to Wendy. Oh my fucking God, I'm an idiot. I'm gonna make a fucking acorn. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna fucking do it. Where you? You'll do. You look like a sort of fantasy acorn. Right. Stage one. Where's my fucking glue gun? Stage two. I have made this with some hot glue and I have covered it in glitter. I am now going to wait for it to set and I'm going to add another layer. I'm making a fucking acorn yell. Oh my god! Do 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 do. I made a fucking acorn and it's covered in glitter. Now I'm going to hot glue this bad boy onto a popper. It is six o'clock in the morning and I am sewing an acorn button on. And I could not be happier with how my life is going right now. The irony is not lost on me <laughs> that I'm sitting on the floor crying. <laughs> Thankfully, there is no Wendy to hear me, just my dog who is used to my shenanigans, so it's fine. I need, I need to take this in a little bit. It's um, I had to put some safety pins in it because uh, tonight's the only night I could film because I've got to go to work and stuff. So it is uh, just a tiny bit baggy, but that's okay. As uh, with everything in sewing, it's better to be. Um, slightly too baggy than too small, so that's fine. <clears throat> I don't think I've got this emotional making a video since I did the Why Molly Mock Saved My Life video. I hate that video so much. It's true, but I, oh, it's so it's too vulnerable. I don't like it, but I don't think I could ever put into words how much this costume means to me now. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why this story just hit me and never left. I can't put into words how much it means to be wearing a costume that's just 
so similar to the ones I've looked at pictures of for ages. And to have this fucking, <laughs> this stupid ass belt that's like the belt that Gene Forbes Robertson wore. And I don't know, something about making this stupid acorn button, I, I don't know what the fuck just happened to me, but I don't know, this is the most specialist, that's not a word, this is the most important costume I've ever made, and I completely understand why a lot of the Peter Pans were rumoured to like take it home and wear it at home and wear it as like a second skin and stuff. This, this story is just, it's, it's so important to my whole world and to have a piece of, sort of, to, to feel just a step closer to it is really, really humbling in a weird way. I really enjoyed making this, this was really fun. As ever, I could have made it easier on myself <laughs> in so many ways. Uh, I'm still learning to use my sewing machine, I'm still trying to resist the pull of doing everything by hand. But I did a decent chunk of this by hand, so I'm happy about that. I am just... Yeah, I'm gonna take all of this in for a sec. Thank you for watching this video. I will update you on my Never Never movie soon. I promise I just got sidetracked by making this. <laughs> I'm so glad I did, oh my god. <laughs> Jean Forbes Robertson in particular means a lot to me because Barry put in a lot of stuff to the script for her and her interpretation of Peter that I really enjoy and I take a lot into my interpretations of Peter. Uh, the whole he's never touched by anyone throughout the show and him sort of recalling back from Wendy and stuff. Him being untouchable and so ethereal and so just unearthly. That's the kind of Peter Pan I always wanted to be and that was how I thought of him. And so that's why Jean Forbes Robertson is very important to me, because that came from her. And I like that they were included in the script, even though a lot of companies and a lot of shows, you know, don't use it. And it's fair enough, because as I've said in many other videos, it would be very impractical in some certain circumstances to not have the actors touch each other. And I appreciate it would be a lot more difficult. I just, I really love that as an interpretation of Peter Pan. And I love that she was the unearthly, ethereal, fake Peter Pan. So... I never met her, and I can only listen to recordings of her speaking, but she she is probably my Peter Pan, apart from Kathy Rigby, but in terms of the play, Jean Forbes Robertson is probably my Peter Pan, and to have made this, oh, I'm gonna go and hug the dog, but this is a happy thought. I am I am thinking happy thoughts, <laughs> despite what it may appear. All right. Oh, okay, I'm gonna go do some Peter Pan facts. Welcome back to Peter Pan facts with me, Milka's Noise, Peter Pan hobbyist and impressionist, and having a total breakdown. <laughs> this dog puts up with a lot, don't you? Mwah.